There we go, nil nil, Cuddleston Park, Everton nil, Bill nil. Uh, really even game, really even game. Uh, can't, don't really think either side will be able to argue with a draw being fair there. Um, they had some good chances and we had some good chances. Um, not loads of quality really. Um, but some really good moves from Everton in the game, I think. Some, some excellent performance individually. Uh, they dug in when they had to. I think that's a really good point. It's against the team that, you know, we're being honest, probably going to be playing Champions League football next season. Uh, could have gone second in the league with that, so got to put it all in perspective. And he really dug in there. Dom's chance, obviously, at the end of the first half is massive. Uh, he sticks that away, who knows? But um, in the second half, we had a few big tackles, last this defending as well. They were probably the best side just in the second half. We were probably the best side in the first half, but loads of good, uh, loads of good displays. Well, Tarkovsky was absolutely magnificent. Um, some thunderous tackles. One which I, I mean, he got booked for one which wasn't even given as a foul. I don't really know what happens there, but um, other players coming over now. Everyone's scarping off. It's absolutely pissing down. So I'll do something and get back to. Uh, the pub. Janet Brown, please just give a share to Ian Lard, which is lovely. Uh, yeah, I thought we'd make a nick with that decor, eh? Dislike all the end as well, but uh, you know they're so good playing the eye line, you're never quite sure. Good Villa, but uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm going to do an artist, just say this farewell. Well, probably not farewell to Everton, but farewell to what he leaves the pitch. He was really good today as well. Had an excellent game. Yeah, I'll be back shortly to go through that in more detail in the Boozer. Yeah, we are back in the Demi Castle. Uh, just interrupted Dave Downey and Emma Kosh having a really in-depth chat about Cat Hotels. Uh, pro probably says a lot about the game today. Uh, Who was the original so person? Mark Mosey, by the way. You can say that about him first because yeah. he's not on it. And yeah. You were talking, that's where he had to go this evening. Mark, if you're listening, I hope your cat sitting appointment goes wow. Well. <laughs> um, so, uh, but yeah, you know, jo sort of joking about that and the game. Uh, I've got Ed, Dave, and Matt Flusk with me. Um, Ed, I'll come to you first, mate. Uh, I'm happy with that. I think the lads dug in. I think they played really well in spells and they, they withheld a, a team that could have gone second in in the table if they, if they come there and won today and a team that have been talked about so highly this season and um, probably would have taken a point before the game so can't necessarily sit here right now and be annoyed that we didn't win it even though we could have won it Absolutely I think if you look at it on paper you certainly look at the quality of that Villa side that's exactly the sort of game where in the past we've, we've been ripped apart uh, and we kept some extremely good players very quiet today Ollie Watkins, I thought, was, was stifled. I thought Musa Diaby was terrible because he couldn't get into the game. A, a number of players there who, who have really caused problems to pretty much every team in the league, and we dealt with them well. So it's a good point overall, and it's nice that we can be disappointed. Uh, I think on the flip side, we do need to remember where we are in the league. Yes. It's still a little bit worrying, just picking up the point here and there, not getting the goals. But I really don't want to keep saying this. We keep playing like that, we'll be fine. <laughs> There's only so long we can say that, but for now, I'm going to bang that drum again. We were good. I was going to say, if you think about what Ed just said there, that, that's an excellent point because you keep repeating that sort of cliche that we've got now. We need to do that against the lesser sides, obviously. If, you, if you're picking up a point at home to the side that could have gone top of the Premier League today or join the yeah. well, same amount of points as the top of the league side, you'd be thinking yeah I'd absolutely take that right now you'd pay money not to get beat by that side because everything is is a boost with that the other side of things that we had a quick chat about just before we start I mean I, I personally and I know you're going to think differently I thought it was a terrible game a terrible game that suited us more to get a result out of it than if we were trying to do our best in it um, first half we barely got a kick in the ball second half it was really competitive in terms of what we tried to do um, midfield wise I think there was time for a change there I thought Garner was okay but 
given what Gomez has been like lately, I would have liked to have seen him on there against what they like uh, Ed was saying there about the Abbey for them and you barely seen him. They put Tielemans Thiel- uh, on, he was crap as well. Just thinking that someone like Gomez in there, the touch of class, probably helps you get a ball forward to what Dan Juman actually did to, to Calvert Lewin and that's that's sort of the centre of the talking point we've got here to win and win the game or at least score a goal was that. Um, and I think that epitomised everything we spoke about him in terms of not fully fit um, maybe that, that's the wrong thing to say now but also confidence he goes through one on one with the keeper and the effort he has on goal was, Dom. Yeah. sorry Dom yeah, it was so so weak ball to him was fantastic just brilliant but yeah I mean I, if someone said if someone paused that before you seen it happen and you had to decide you had to put a bet on is he going to score or not you'd say he's not going to score yeah, um, that Dom chance. Like in the moment, I thought it was a really good save with the feet by the goalie. And then when I watched it, like on my phone at half time, I was like, "Wow, he's hit it right down the middle." Like you said before, Matt, he's, he's he's tried to give him the eyes. He thought he could slot it between his legs, and he's not FIFA goalie of the year for no reason. Like he's seen it coming, and it's just come off one thigh onto the other. I thought that the follow up save after that that was absolutely outstanding, and that was kind of the story of the game. Like. Pickford had a couple of good saves. We had very good like defensive play. We just kind of cancelled each other out, to be honest. And it, it wasn't. I don't think it was a terrible game. Like there were moments, but it felt very two o'clock kickoff Sunday. It was just a bit, a bit flat. The atmosphere was a bit flat. We had a couple of moments, but overall, it, it's not a game. I would have said I take a point going into it because any home game we should be having a go and trying to get three, but. When all said and done, the dust has settled. It's another clean sheet. It's a nil-nil draw against a very good side who ripped us to absolute shreds at their place in the league. So, yes. yeah. you've got to say, it looks like improvement. Yeah. And they should be taking that forward now into Wednesday and the next league game, whenever that is, in about 25 months. Yeah. But they're, up, they're absolutely giving everything out at the moment. It's like, you know, they are leaving everything else on the pitch. And I think today you could sort of see the... While we weren't razor sharp, like that wasn't a Wolves where everyone looked absolutely fucked and you know they just passed around. It was like there was a lot more snap and a lot more bite about the way we went about it today. And I, I, I enjoyed the game in spells, but it was one of them where I just kind of thought like every time one team started to build a bit of momentum, like something would happen to to like completely stop that momentum. Like and the, the example I can use for us, it was like it was after Tarkovsky got booked. I mean, we'll talk about that, I'm sure. Uh, for some reason which nobody knows and then I think Tielemans hacked down Harrison was it in the corner and we got a free kick and like the, the whole crowd was up like the place was bouncing everyone was like ready for us to score a goal and then McNeil crosses the ball and it goes straight to Martin as and it's like oh and it just felt like that happened all day like for both sides like you know they did it like they were putting pressure on us in the second half I was like they're building pressure up here and then one of their midfielders just like knocked a square out of play for a throw into us and like their momentum went it just felt like that was happening all game yeah that McNeil cross I called that in real time I turned to the <laughs> fellow sat next to me and I said like I don't know why we've put a left footer on this from that side I said, it's just going to go straight into the goalie's hands and I just went boop, straight in I just looked at him and just started laughing it's like we should have had like Hannison at least have a right foot on that side like float you know sort of swings back out again someone gets ahead on it but it's just little moments like that just little fine margins that we're not quite hitting at the moment and like especially Dan Juma down the right he's, his decision making is 99 times out of 100 abysmal for me the only good one was the pass for Carl Lewin for the chance but like he had one where I think he won a corner off it in the end but you could just see him like he's he's running in he's got the perfect chance just to cut it across the box it could be a stuffy pinball and a deflection and he's gone for goal again and it's gone out for a corner it's like we're not going to get that many chances to get forward against a team like Aston Villa they've got to be every single moment they've got to be very sharp and they've got to be on it and I just thought especially towards the end of the game like we'll probably talk about Onana's couple of passes and chances it just felt like it was rushed and like kind of snatching at things and maybe in the back of their minds they were thinking it's still nil-nil like we're not desperate to score here but I just want to see a little bit more like ruthlessness in some of the balls and some of the shots that we have yeah. Um, just on Carver Lewin then Ed, um just, just just remember that actually that his his goal against Villa away in the cup, he does exactly the same thing as what he tried to do today, didn't he? I think it's Olsen in goal that yeah. night and he, he gives him the eyes and just passes it in the corner and like he's running through on goal. It's, it's literally the same moments, but 
just it's just not going for it at the moment, is it? Like I, I thought he actually started the game really well, won a few headers, got hold of it, um, and then as soon as he missed that chance, he just seemed to just just fade as a force. But I'm not looking at better either and thinking you've got to come in and start games either. So it's 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 a bit of an issue for us now, isn't it? I feel I feel awful of him. First of all, I feel really really bad for him, and you can see a moment. Just after he had the miss and, and after the ball got out of the corner, he was absolutely distraught on his haunches. And, and he's feeling it. We're, we're annoyed him, and we should be for that chance specifically. Anyone who is employed to put balls into the back of the net should be putting that ball into the back of that net. But he knows that as well, so we don't have to tell him. And I think a few people around me were a bit too vehement in telling him, which I didn't enjoy. But he will be feeling that. He'll be feeling awful. And it's a real bind that Deitch is in now, not just because of the, the Beto situation, whether he's a good replacement or not, but because either you've got to take Carvalhoon out the firing line for a bit and hope that he comes back feeling a bit better within himself, or you've got to keep giving him chances to get it right. Because Calvert-Lewin is a confidence player. This is not the first time in his Everton career that he's gone a long period without scoring and has missed good chances. I'm sure I recall a game at Villa Park where he was he missed a couple of absolute yeah. sitters. That was the uh, beat Villa we go top game, wasn't yeah, it? God, yeah, and we were saying... <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, everyone. Um, but we were saying the same thing about him then, so it's, it's not a new conversation. And this is, this is the thing that has kept him from being in that top rung of strikers. That rung that... Watkins has got himself into in more recent times. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, he's, he's, he's very much endemic of the team, really. There's talent in there, there's ability, there's work rate, but there is something missing. And that, that's what I'm worried about with Calvert Lewin. But I'm not going to lose faith in him yet because when you're a striker, and we, we talk about the old cliche of the ball going in off his ass. It might happen at some point, and if it does, potentially everything changes. So we've got to keep our fingers crossed for that, I think. Yeah, I do have sympathy for him uh, up to a certain extent there. Like, I mean, I'd said that to, to a perfect effect, really. Other thing as well, it's going back to a classic event where you've just got one striker there um, who you need to get somebody in and around, and that's Decore. Mm-hmm. Decore came in today. I was really excited to see him. Quite rusty, really. Sorry? What do you think rusty, Decore, today? Yeah, no, that, that's an excellent point. And I was going to say, it felt like... He felt like he was overly desperate to get involved wherever he could, not stay in the position you want him in there to link up with Calvert Lewin and anyone in and around that position. And that, that's what it felt to me. It felt like an, an old school, you've got an Everton striker there who's no more than, who's going to be about 10, 15 yards away from any other Everton player there. And that, 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 if, if that's the case, if that's how we're going, that's where we are going to be in a bit of trouble if we're not creating chances like that. The one chance we created was that. We can't go into games where you're like we're sitting here ruining that and saying, "Oh lads, just imagine that went in there. We'd have got a one nil." We that, we can't stay in that in that sort of mindset. And you mentioned before we were talking, Matt, about Beto as well. He's not he's not he's not the change you want to make on the bench, is he? When you need a goal in a game, I think the I, 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 on the commentary, um, Alan Smith was commentating on Sky, and he went, "I think it'd be really interesting to see both Dominic Calvert Lewin and Beto up front together." And I, I couldn't, for a long time since he's come, I couldn't have think of anything worse. But you get to a point where you think, we've got to try something different out here. You know, we've got to do something different. And um, positive wise, though, um, I think Harrison's probably one of his best games for yeah, he us. He was excellent today. He was. He, I mean, as we've always said, that the, the thing he always does is he throws everything into, into everything he does. It might not have that quality. But he was he was hit hard by Villa. Villa knew he was going to be the threat, you know what, and he like, threw a load of players over towards him. I thought there were loads of like some of his first touches today were like ping crosses over to him, and like and, like just bringing them out the sky. Just he just killed a lot of balls yeah. really yeah. flat, and he did really well. But um, just on on other good performances, Matt. I thought um, I thought Tarkovsky was was head and shoulders our best player today. Um, Hilarious, apparently on Sky, that uh, Roy Keane said he's a bit too enthusiastic in his, some of his tackling, which I found was mad. But um, he was just, I just thought he was absolutely colossal throughout today. Um, won everything, flung himself into everything, got the crowd going when he needed. Um, brilliant, brilliant performance. He's been an amazing signing for us. Yeah, the only thing that marred his game was the, the bucket, which <laughs> absolutely baffling, like yeah. just baffling. 
in the build-up to it, he's getting manhandled on the edge of the box. There's at least three fouls there. He's just waiting for the linesman to flag it. Nothing comes. So he thinks, Frank, fine then. And he does his trademark, big booming tackle, wins the ball clean and takes a couple of kneecaps with him. And then he just calmly gets up and walks away. And all the Villa players start kicking off. And, like, you know, there's some handbags going, but he's not actually involved in it. He just beckons people over. And then, <laughs> and then you've got this raffle winner of a referee who comes over and, like ends up booking him for it it was completely baffling but he, he got right under the skin the whole game didn't he like he had them on strings and it's just a shame that we couldn't have got the three points to go with it because he I, mean, I didn't see the official man of the match but if it wasn't him I'd be very surprised I didn't see you got man of the match on um, don't I'll oh, pay it's a good, it's a good question to ask between us all really if you, if you predict I'd, they said. I'd, I'd say Tarkovsky but far ahead of everybody else on there but it was interesting that you guys wouldn't have seen this but you know when Villa scored and the offside comes in did you see what happened or would, have you heard what happened Dan, Dan Juma got shoved over didn't he not that on the telly they went to footage to watch the fellas at Stockley Park oh, judging it okay. it was it was amazing yeah. I, was, I sat there looking and you know they waited like three or four minutes yeah. and you guys watching it I sat there and like you've seen Paul Tierney haven't they all got refereeing kits on <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> a sat- deal, sat- honestly yeah. yeah that's it it's like it's like going to school or something is there a footy kit you want to... <laughs> 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 we'll be waiting for them to finish their bag of crisps or something no, it's obviously offside wasn't it Yeah, it was, I don't think it was obvious when I saw it the first two times I seen the replay I thought there's no way this isn't getting given but it looks like they give it on for two reasons whoever it was on the as you look the right hand side him there yeah, yeah. yeah sorry I'm saying this on the podcast but also the guy that was in the middle in front of Pickford yeah. when that lad, by the way it's a wonderful strike yeah. he's gutted that he doesn't score but there's a lad that's slightly in front of Pickford blocking his eye line right. I initially thought it was him but it wasn't it was uh, everyone will watch it today on really? match of the day or whatever Dan June was kicking off that he got thrown to the floor and that, like yeah. I think he was worried that he was on the ground and therefore yeah. played everyone on side so all in all there's probably three different things there that you could probably say that's why that goal can't, can't happen um, by the way that, was it Moreno who scored the goal yeah. or the goal that was disallowed all game long that lad was fuming yeah, he was uh, off his arse, was he? absolutely fuming um, obviously it's because of that goal not getting scored but um, yeah I mean the other side of it Matt as well when I said it's a crap game it was a proper old fashioned game in terms of like there was proper scraps in there there wasn't too many were throwing themselves on the, on the floor I mentioned Michalenko there just gets up and his head's been all over the well, place he makes an amazing block yeah. doesn't he right at the end as well um, but yeah uh, Tarkovsky just for just epitomise what we're all about today he's very evident isn't he he's, yeah. he's just very evident I, I thought it was a great sign when we got him and I think that's that's been proved it was free wasn't it yeah was free game. yeah absolutely and he, he puts everything into every game but he's a smart defender as well he's, he's not massive he's not slow but he's not massively quick but he always gets himself in a good position uh, and if he's not in a good position he's more than happy to throw his body in the way uh, personally I think man of the match for me was Harrison I think some good yeah. points have been made and one thing he did brilliantly today, which is a real basic for attacking players, but we do sorely miss, is he moved the ball forwards, he took yeah. the ball with him and progressed, which is great. Took us from the halfway line into attacking positions quite a number of times, which is great. Um, but Tarkovsky, sort of, he deserves his flowers. He's, he's been really, really good. And he's marshalling Brantwaite next to him as well, and Brantwaite's learned a lot. I think he's so unflappable, Jared Brantwaite. There are a few times where Villa players were sort of getting up at him and having a chat with him. He just walked away, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. So between the two of them, it's so nice to have a bedrock. And with Mikolenko as well. The right back position is still in the balance, but he was okay. He was okay. Uh, he's obviously not able to progress as quickly as he once did. I think that held him back. Um, but it's, it's you know a couple of nil nils in a row now, which is a precious commodity for Everton. I think we ought to <laughs> sort of celebrate that. It was good. Yeah, I, I had two lads behind me who were calling Coleman for everything the whole game, but it was very clear, especially in the first half. They Villa targeted our right side, and they could see that Harrison wasn't dropping back too much. He was leaving Coleman exposed quite a bit, but obviously Coleman's got that wise head on the shoulders now. More often than not, he put it out for the throw in. They didn't get the better of him too many times, so considering they were like doubling up on him. I'd say the only real failing down that side, or probably the other side, was the corners. It was so obvious every single time they had the corner what they were going to do and everyone screaming like bring a man forward bring a man forward That's where their disallowed goal came from wasn't it? Yeah eventually yeah it did yeah like they just had the two players and either they just flick it behind them and 
Bailey had run off or they just knocked it to John again. And on another day when they're sharper, they would have punished us and beat us 3-4-0 there with yeah. those corners. Well, thankfully, it didn't happen that way. But overall, I think Holman's game was absolutely fine. And, yeah, long may it continue. Um, he got his nice little banner. On the, I've only just seen it then. I didn't see that. Because it was, like, right in front of me. It's a, it's a really nice banner. Describe it for the listeners. <laughs> um, it, it says, like, 15 years of Seamus. Um, Decore has actually tweeted it out. Uh, well, it's fine. I could it. see it pretty well from the park end. It, and... <laughs> the the sun came out at the exact moment it unfurled as well. It was very poetic. No, it, it looks lovely in the sun yet. Ah, yeah. oh, yeah. It's it's a really really good likeness of him with like a wreath around it, and then yeah, fifteen years of Seamus and very nice letters with. Um, I think those are Irish flags either side. It's either that or Ivory Coast. It's hard to tell which yeah. is which. Playing <laughs> tribute to the, the Afcon going on at the moment in Ivory Coast. How come he's back in? He's just oh, yeah. not throwing in a little Aruna Kone tribute at the same time. <laughs> no, I'm being facetious. It is the Irish flag because the green's on the left. Yeah. But yeah, and the best uh, thing about it, he's gone one game above Tim Howard, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. Which is the best news ever because he's a bell <laughs> like, It's like, it's just, um, I think Coleman as well. Like, I think we, we sort of take for granted like quite a lot like that he's he's hardly played this season has he and like for a long time we've been like oh we can't wait for him to come back but we're talking about a lad here who's like 35, 36 he's had two or three really serious injuries in his career um, it's hard playing as a fullback in the Premier League now again you know look at Bailey and Diaby today and think like they are like rocket ships aren't they as footballers they are so fast and he just like to, to be able to just come in Dave and just like hit the ground running straight away and like, and, like not be amazing but like you think about players from other teams you'd think like 35 years old been out for months back in the team get after them yeah we've got just, one of them actually young <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but like the fact that he can just hit that level straight away it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a huge testament to him and like probably doesn't get spoken about enough no you're right he doesn't um, I, I think that's a sign of players who've been really good for us is they don't get spoken about enough yeah. in a funny way um, the way in which he played today as well so disciplined and what he did he did the right thing when he's getting up there with Harrison. He's trying to play that little overlap. He does it. He's done it his whole career. Didn't get it knocked back to him a few times for whatever reasons. Um, coming back the other way though, didn't think he put a foot wrong. And Villa, obviously, I think when Emery's t- talking to them about this game, they'll be, he'll be saying, "Let's get over there, get our quick play, like Bailey over there, get our quick plays over there, and look like you overlap this lad all the time." Didn't see. I seen it once or twice where they got to the byline and put a cross in. Other than that, mate, you, you wouldn't know he was the age he is. Yeah. And, and I think that's the sort of best testament to play to him. Um, he looked like he's a lad who could just go on for years and years and years. Just doesn't look like... He, he'll probably, he's the type of lad, the way he is. We know a lot about the personality and how he talks and why he's the captain. He, he's the type of lad, I think he's, he, he's pretty desperate not to retire. Yeah. Someone will have to tell him, you can no longer play in yeah. this time, in this squad, you're no longer the captain for him to not play football anymore and, and, and I just if any of the rest of them had the mentality he's had for 15 years Everton wouldn't be in anywhere near a position of a relegation fight regardless of when it comes uh, yeah exactly absolutely right and I just wanted to say I, I think I'm not going to say we should enjoy him or anything quite that cliche but yeah. we're not going to have a Seamus Coleman again yeah. uh, the, the way football is now <laughs> And, and the way that we are as a club and the way that you know any player who excels is going to have to move on for the money we're not going to have someone again who's around for, for 15 years providing a lot of quality and, and as you say Dave being in his mid to late 30s and still being able to come out and produce in the Premier League so it, it's he, he's somehow become an anachronism when obviously at the start of his career there were all sorts of players like that but you, you just don't get it now and, and I think it's really special that we've got someone like him and he'll he'll be revered. He he doesn't want to be thought of as a legend because he hasn't won anything. I think a lot of people will feel the same way. But in in any case, he, he's someone to cherish because he's just he's given us everything, and he's going to get into his forties and fifties and not be able yeah. to walk because of everything. <laughs> they will have to drag him off the pitch. Literally have to drag him off the pitch and say, "There's your pension, mate. You can't play for us anymore." <laughs> I also think as a, as a right back, he's not. He doesn't ever seem to me as a conventional one like that. He he seems a right back to me. He always makes his own decisions really, and he's not obviously he's been, has had an instruction from whatever manager he's got. But I don't look at him and think, right? He, he's so intelligent at that position. He knows what he needs to do on that side. And what we always said about him, if he can cross a ball, mate, probably wouldn't be in Everton anymore if he can cross a ball properly. But I get. I also think like to the back to the start of his career. 
I like when he played. I like what he, he played Benfica, didn't he, in that, that game? And I was like, I remember early on, he always played in right mid, didn't he? Because every, every time he watched him, I was like, this lad's great going forward, but like, my God, defensively, he is really hopeless. And I think the fact he's been able to adapt his game now to the point where it's like, that is that is his game, isn't it? It's shutting down wingers and being positionally sensible. Like, <laughs> and you think about the way in which he's changed his game and adapted. Like, that's huge credit to him and his intelligence as a player. Um, just for just for your wrap up. You've interviewed him, by the way, haven't you, Matt? Yeah, once. Yeah, yeah I asked yeah. him like to feel like a scout. now he's lived here for ten ten years, but he's been been here fifteen now. So, um, just before we wrap up, um, just one gripe for me today, um, Matt. I think when Beto came off the bench, I was just so disappointed in him. Like, and like, you, like I've never really fully thought he was that good. But off the bench today, I'd, like even the running round, the pressing, the, the hassling, it just wasn't there at all. And I just, I just wonder. And like, I know there's going to be a lot of calls for Dom to come off the team now after after what happened and, and the chance he's missed recently. But I, I don't look at that fella and think necessarily he's definitely the answer. And. I just think today when we were under a bit of under a bit of pressure, we need someone to just be come on and be a menace. Like, being brutally honest, he looked like a lad to me who thought I'm going to play three games now after that red card, and it's been rescinded, and he was he was sulking a little bit. That's an interesting take. I hadn't actually considered that. Yeah, he, he, he does he does certain things really well, and he didn't do any of those things well today. Like, he what was, does he do well? Well, like he can put his back to defenders. Like he can allow players to run on alongside him he's a, just a pest whenever he has the ball at his feet he's a pest to centre halves because you know I'm either going to have to let this fella just walk past me or foul him and potentially get yellow or red cards but he was just giving away cheap fouls he wasn't pressuring he wasn't pressuring the goalie which we've done all, all game quite well because Martinez was perfectly happy to have the ball at his feet wait for us to come to him little sideways pass and towards the end I mean what was it you said in the car our possession for the whole game was less than like 30 something for that last 10 minutes I reckon it must have been about 10% because yeah. they just passed it along the back with no pressure on them at all so yeah I, I didn't think about the sulking thing I, I wouldn't really think that he definitely today I'd shake his head he was, he was definitely in a mood today I about something I'd things but I, that did, I didn't get that vibe I just thought it was just a, a clumsy performance in you know cold weather and everything he's come off the bench It's everyone's a bit flat I don't know, what do you think, Ed? There was a, sorry, Ed, just before you start, there was a really, really funny moment. I don't know if you guys got onto it. He dropped deep to round about where the bench is, and someone played him in like a diagonal. I think it might have been Colbert who plays him in diagonal, like 40, 50 yard ball. <laughs> and he plucks it from the air. And I think you just hear this, like, everyone around that part of the pitch was just like, just like was shocked at the time. You just you know when it goes close when you're watching it on Sky and you see all the family and close of people behind it, the faces on some people's like they were just amazed by the fact he just pulled this out of the air. And and, and you know, I am in between what you guys said there. I think like Ed, Ed did this and I'm not I'm not blowing him out for this, but as soon as you mention his name and I'm included, there's a smile or there's a laugh or there's I can't believe we've got him sort of image on people's heads there. I think that, I think that's harsh on him, but you can see why. You can see why. You know, when, when he comes on the pitch, the first thing, like Matt said there, that you come into is he's strong. He'll hold the ball up. He'll either he'll either be given a free kick or concede one. Um, he's just look. He's not. He's not built to be a Premier League striker. So we've seen so far. You know, you hope somebody. You hope he clicks on at some point. But you wouldn't go through that. You know, cliche picture and say. He'll come good. He'll come good at some time. I don't see where that happens. All right. Okay. As you know, Matt, you know I'm a better apologist. So let's just move that aside. I'm, I'm not having the pop psychology. I do not believe he was in a huff. He was no. definitely sulking today. He, he definitely was not at his best today. We've, we've all had bad days at the office. I, I think he was ineffectual today and he didn't do what he can do. I don't think it means that he's upset he didn't get three. He's probably delighted that his teammates are around to, to play. Uh, he just didn't He didn't ha- do well today. And everything he did, he had his back to goal and he was on the halfway line. I wouldn't be too happy as a striker in that situation either. Um, so hopefully against Spurs, who, who we have got on the TV behind us and who do look very open still, um, and, and teams like that. Who have we got coming? We've got Spurs coming up soon. We've got Palace. We've got Palace. Wait, Palace is going to be difficult, I think, for a player like him. But certainly against Spurs, the team that plays up. Uh, 
Andy Johnson was round the Denby obviously this week and, and that's a striker who, who Beto could learn from using, using a bit of pace to get in behind there's, there's a blueprint there I, I'd like to think that Beto can come good I'm, I'm not willing to, to say that he was, he was, I'm, I'm he was not, I mean I'm not writing him off either by the way I just, I just thought today like when he usually comes on there's, there's always that like intensity and like it is, he, he runs after everything doesn't he and like sometimes it's a bit mad and um, it doesn't really work but he chases after everything and he's passionate and he, he's enthusiastic and today he just looked like after five minutes when he came on and the ball got passed around him a few times it was like the arms were coming up and like it was chin on his chest and like he just looked he just looked in a mood all, all, all the whole time he was on and like the listen, same issue as Calvert-Lewin though it was just what I was explaining if you don't get anyone in around him the mentality of Calvert Lewin obviously is a lot better than what we've seen from Beto. But surely he should be thinking. Oh, he should. My, my rival is playing absolutely terribly. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm going to come on and show here. Like even even if I don't get much of the ball, I'm going to show. Them. I'm going to run after everything, yeah. chase everything. And it was like it was like the total opposite when he came on. There, there was yeah, you could there was a notable difference between what we've seen from him so far to today. Um, look, none of us could tell why that's going to happen, but he's he's a lad when I've seen him come on. The very, very least you get from a player you might well write off immediately. A player, like you said, and then who you would continue, you're not, you're not willing to write him off yet. At the very least, he's somebody who comes on and runs his bollocks off, and I agree with you, that didn't happen today. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll pitch him one more time. <laughs> <laughs> there's a chance that. You got his name on the back of your shirt, yeah. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> there's a pretty good chance he's been instructed not to go around like a mad idiot. Like he's he's wasting a lot of energy. He's got to be on for half an hour of that game. There's no point chasing right to left to right to left because Villa were playing out from the back, and he would have been on his own. I, I just I don't I don't believe it. It's entirely because he's in a hole. I'm I'm not going to turn around and say he's a brilliant striker, and he, he hasn't really shown a huge amount yet. But I, I just we seem we seem pretty desperate to assume that players are, are unhappy or, or no, I, 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 I just, he just didn't do very I well. I just today. thought it was noticeable today. And again, I might be reading too much into this, but I just thought it was noticeable today how he was in his body language and in the way he acted compared to every other time I've seen him in an Everton shirt. It's like even, even when he's come on and we've been getting levered, he's always like ran around, put pressure on, like been really enthusiastic. And like it just wasn't, I, just, I, don't, I don't know why. Maybe he's, had, maybe he's had a shit week, maybe something's going on at home, I don't know. Like, but it just, it just wasn't there today. I just think maybe the fact that Villa played with a very high line might have stifled him a bit. And it, it well, maybe that, wasn't that, the that's best game, isn't it? Like the best change. That, that's meant to be what he's all about, isn't it? Like running in behind and, and getting onto things. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like I, I don't want. I, I, I just think we play a system that is fantastic for fullbacks and wide players, and it's not good for central midfielders. It's not good for centre forwards because ultimately we've got central midfielders who are watching the ball go over there. And we've got strikers who are on their own, flicking the ball yeah. onto no one like I Dave, Dave said. Gone. Anyway. I think that's a, that's a nasty stereotype for Sean Dyche. <laughs> it's not a stereotype. Look how many goals <laughs> Abdullah the Corey scored. He doesn't score from long ball. He's basically a striker, though, isn't he? Not? Yeah, but we're not like, well, hoofing we it up to him, are we? I didn't say we're just hoofing up. I'm just, <laughs> it's a system that does not work to his strengths. And, and honestly, the, the, the sort of ball that Dan Juma played for Calvert-Lewin, mm. did better. I don't have any of those today because I didn't see them. No, no, he didn't. He would have loved one of those, I'm sure. So it's, there's stuff to work on. I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, Beto could be doing more himself, but I still think there's more we could be doing for our strikers. I've said it early on since he came, right? He'll score a goal like Paolo Wanchop did. He will score one of those goals <laughs> where he picks it up and just runs around about six. Like back foot against Chelsea, just yeah. like loads of deflections and yeah, bumbling exactly. through. Yeah. Just runs it in and bags it, and that's what he'll do. He's the type of player that'll get us a crucial goal at a crucial time and we all turn around and say I fucking love Beto <laughs> I, I really like it he look at the face it's always, it's always that face obviously I, I like I, his, his attitude has been great up until this point but I just, today I just thought like you are in a mood about something where's Shemitu as well by the way is he going to get a goal oh, I mean, he must be terrible wasn't he but like <laughs> Um, he's, he's, he's hibernating till the sun comes yeah. back out. He's, he's in the park having a game now with his mates, isn't he? Maybe he's still on a plug this morning, better. And it's, been, it's one of them days for him. You know, we've all been there. Um, listen, but positive overall, that we got a point there today. And that's a good, really good point. For it's really good point. Uh, we can go into that replay now against Palace and smash them, hopefully, after what happened Don't the other week. Start asking that question. Oh, God. Who's the referee for that? I hope it's not the same dickhead as last week. What was that then if we win? Okay. Bol- Bolton or Luton? Bolton or Luton. At home. Yeah. The Denby Derby, is it, Matt? Denby Derby, yeah. If we get in the Bolton. last 16. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there we go. Uh, so, 
Yeah. We'll be back. We'll be new back for Blue Monday tomorrow, Dave. Loads uh, to chat about, haven't we? Loads to chat about, yeah. Um, I'm sure we'll get some reactions from this. Uh, let us know your thoughts on anything we spoke about there. Uh, cheers to Matt and Ed as well. Up the toffees. We'll speak to you again very soon.